what is going on and happy friday uh i gotta put that out there but what up my north county fam i'm your girl kelly here to give you the rundown on what happened in st louis county government this week and i'm gonna get right into it first uh regarding the st louis county council um redistricting i guess efforts so they had a meeting on monday and full disclosure y'all your girl was trying to log on to that mug, and it took me like 30 minutes to be able to get into the meeting. So, I'm just kind of putting that out there in the universe for people. And I get technology, blessing and curse, but um, it took me like 30 minutes to get onto the meeting. So, by the time I got onto the meeting, it was clear that I had missed, <laughs> like, literally, like, the first half of the meeting. And if you recall, uh, during Monday's meeting, the plan was for this uh, reapportionment commission to present two maps, one from the Democrats on the commission, one from the Republicans on the commission for them to kind of discuss it and then open it up for the public to discuss it, right? That that was a plan. So, like I said, I got on there late. Um, so, I missed... I think it was the Democrats map that I missed. Uh, so when I got on, they were discussing the second map. So again, I don't know. I think that was the Republicans one. Again, y'all, I'm not completely sure. Uh, but when, you know, as the commission were wrapping up their discussions about that map, um, they opened up for public comments. I know, um, Councilman Fitch was present and he made a comment because the meeting, you know, it takes place in person as well as virtual, but in person at the county chamber. And Councilman Fitch, you know, during the public comment time, he literally said like he felt some type of a way because um, I think the Democrats map had uh, pretty much like they drew him out of his district, uh, and he represents District 3, and he felt it was intentional um, since it didn't happen to any other uh, county council member. And the Democrats, you know, present, they apologized and said, thanks for bringing this to our attention, bruh. We ain't mean, you know, we ain't trying to do nothing like that. So, yeah. Next step. So... Both maps will be submitted uh, so they can be publicly available because, again, the commission, they really want the public to weigh in on these maps. They will also continue the discussion um, to make sure these maps can be finalized. And also, they'll get clarification on the date the map needs to be, like, done. So I think there's a bit of confusion on when the final date is. So, um they're working on that. So again, their next meeting will be uh, Monday, November, geez, November 15th. So at 6.30. So yes, sure there's more to come with that. The next highlight, oh Lord, y'all, Spires. So um, I, you know, I listen to the county council meetings every week. Actually this week I had the the awesome opportunity to be in the flesh in person in the county chamber during uh, this week's county council meeting to provide a public comment but um i was there and before the public comment uh before they really got popping into the meeting uh spire a representative from spire was present to provide a brief presentation to the county council members um because I know it had been brought to, I know Councilman Trakis and I think some other council members' attention of their constituents receiving these like emails from uh, Spire, basically freaking people the hell out uh, and, and giving them a heads up that there may be outages with their service um, starting, uh, y'all, starting December 13th. So why is this? So really quickly, apparently, so this pipeline, Spires, Pipe, Spires St. Louis Pipeline, um, it was approved in 2018 by what is called the Federal Energy uh, Regulatory Commission. 
and uh, and it was built in 2019 to uh, better serve the St. Louis region um, in providing natural gas. So um, the Environmental Defense Fund challenged uh, the FERC. So I'm going to call this regulatory commission. I'm going to call it the FERC for sure because it's just too many words. Uh, so they challenged uh, FERC's decision, um, 2018 decision in court this year. And um, the court ruled that Spire had not demonstrated a need for the pipeline. Um, and this was in like June or July of 2021. Um, and that the pipeline will continue its service up to uh, through December 13th of this year. And, you know, as we know, like, that ain't even when winter really hits in St. Louis, for real, for real, right? So that that's that's not uh, the best news to hear so yeah if the FERC doesn't extend that 12 13 deadline or december 13 deadline gas outages could potentially impact 400,000 homes um, in the area so as i mentioned the representative from aspire he gave a brief presentation to the uh, county council members because they invited him or invited Spire to to speak to this issue, um, and in the presentation, you know, he kind of the the gentleman representing Spire laid out this information. Um, he was urging support. He also was urging support. Wants to get some support from St. Louis County Council and community members uh, to to extend that December thirteenth cutoff date. So he also, the representative from Spire also mentioned the contingency plan. So they do have a, con a, t a contingency plan in the event that like, you know, the pipeline gets cut off December 13th. Uh, and I know part of this contingency plan, some of the things he mentioned were part of this contingency plan were urging uh, customers to decrease their usage uh, of gas also uh tapping into other reserves and also um i guess shipping liquid natural gas so yeah so councilman Drake has requested that council members get a copy of this written plan so they know what they what where they mind is um i know a council member also asked if this means that prices are going to go up for Spire customers. And the representative said that he, quote, can't speak to that. So, yeah. And then there are a lot of, you know, issues with, okay, this happened. The 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 verdict or whatever came out in uh, June or July. You send this email out now, freaking people out. Why are you doing now? And the representative was saying, well, you know, they, you know, were working, I guess, on their end to get this extension and they didn't want to alert people or freak people out um, if there was no need, <clears throat> excuse me, to inform them of, of this matter. So, yeah, there was a lot of issue with that, understandably so. And. Um, to be sure, there will be a full meeting devoted to this topic because, again, the presentation, it wasn't, like, really long and the dialogue it really wasn't that long. So, to be sure, there will be a full meeting, uh, probably a committee of the whole uh, by the county council uh, to really uh, fully devote to this topic, flesh some things out. Um, so, you know, I will keep you posted on, on when this next meeting is and, and what transpires so to be continued and then the next thing i last highlight i wanted to mention arpa coin um american rescue plan act funding formally but you know i like to use coin right so there were are more suggestions provided on how to spend this arpa coin in st louis county so um if you recall st louis county is set to receive about 193 um, million dollars uh, in ARPA funding. So far, they've received about ninety-seven million dollars. Um, there's been about three million dollars already spent um, on um, 
Councilwoman Webb's Vaccination Incentive Program, also uh, funding to support an external auditor to make sure the St. Louis County is doing, you know, what they need to be doing with these coins. And also um, funding has been allocated or has been appropriated to support um, some raises and, and stuff uh, within the Department of Justice Services. So that's where the $3 million has gone so far. So where are the proposals on the table? So again, if we recall, uh, you have the North County Health and Wellness Recovery Plan. So that's looking um, for at least $50 million in ARPA funding to support uh, North County residents. You also have the South County Strong Plan, which Trake is introduced, what was that, last week? So that's about $62 million to support South County. And then the new proposal, um, some requests from the police department. So I know Councilman Fitch kind of, you know, brought all of the police department's kind of needs together through the budget hearings and also from correspondence received from the uh, Board of of police commissioners um, and in total the police department um, would be seeking in ARPA funds a total of $38.2 million and um, this is what they would utilize that funding for $4.2 million for a new computer aided dispatch system $15 million for a new combined central county precinct station and property evidence control facility uh, $15.6 million for their regional information and intelligence center and $3.4 million to increase the number of resident officer patrol cars in the community by 50. Um, and I know a couple of these um, items that they're looking to purchase, they were recommendations from the Teneo report. So yeah, I'll be sure to keep you posted on how this unfolds because I'm trying to see how this coin is going to be spent in St. Louis County. So I'm rounding it out this week, y'all, with the legislative corner. So there were a couple of bills that were passed that I just wanted to lift up just so uh, y'all was aware. So first, bill number 307 was passed and it authorizes acceptance of a grant of up to $527,000 from the University of Missouri St. Louis to be used for reimbursement of expenses incurred from participating in the Safety and Justice Challenge Initiative. And bill number 311 was passed, which accepts a grant of up to $4.7 million to support the St. Louis Community Health Workers for Regional COVID Response and Resilient Communities Program. That's all I have for you this week. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and you'll see me soon. Peace.